Hello, everybody. I wanted to end this week with providing you a little demo on Free Lucy. Free Lucy is a product that we talked about from Inspy. And we talked about it on this week's digital service workgroup call. The reason that we're talking about Free Lucy is because we want to make it easier to build models like these. Today, they're pretty tough. And I'm going to show you kind of the before and after experience of building a model out like this, whether we're using Free Lucy or we're using traditional methods. All right, so in order to get Lucy, you can go to the ServiceNow store and just type in Lucy. It took me about 15 minutes to install this, and most of that time was just going to this page and waiting for the email saying that the install is ready. Now, once I got it installed, and I installed it in our digital service workgroup instance. So for those of you that want to come in and check it out before installing it in your own instance, you can go on here and, uh, and check out what we have. Now, the way this works is I'm going to start up here with a business application and I'm going to pull out Office 365. OK, so if I go into my business applications and I have a list of these, uh, all the ones that I'm doing for digital service work group. So I can go out and pull up my Office 365 business application. Now, inside of a common service data model, there is certain relationships that are allowed and ones that you shouldn't have. Like I shouldn't be able to connect a business application to a Windows server. But it doesn't preclude you from doing that in, in the way that we usually define these. So I can go down here and when I click on my relationship, I can click a, any relationship I want. And then I'm able to connect this business application to any device I want or any class that I want. Now, one of the things that we want to do is we want to make that more restrictive so that we only see the things that we're allowed to connect it to while sticking to the common service data model. I'll go ahead and click on edit relationships here and I'll show you what I mean. So this is the Free Lucy visual designer. And right now, Office 365, it, it has these connections already. So I have a connection with my website management capability, business capability. And I also have a relationship with my SharePoint Azure uh, business application. Right? So this, this is an application that's provided by an application. Right? SharePoint Azure is provided by Office 365. So if I, what I could do here with Free Lucy is if I don't want these relationships anymore, I can go ahead and just drag them off into the, the space. And now what happens is I just got rid of those relationships once I commit these changes. So if I commit the changes now, you'll see I can delete those two relationships. And a lot of times what we're going to have to do as we clean up, we're going to go have to delete those relationships. So now what I want to do is I want to show you how do we reestablish those relationships. Now, if I go up here and I select the table, and the first thing I want to do with Office 365 is I want to connect my business capability. So I can go to my business capability, and I'll, I'll just use my... DSWG. So website management, right, is my business capability I want to connect. Now, website management has an upstream effect on Office 365. So you'll see that I don't have a circle here, but I only have a target area here. So I'm able to drag this now and connect website management. And then what that would do is it's going to create the relationship that I'm supposed to have here. Right? And I'm going to show you how we configure it to do that. Now, I also want a downstream relationship. I want a downstream relationship with Azure SharePoint. So what I can go in here is I can change this over and I can say I want to create an Azure SharePoint as a business application. So I want to create a downstream relationship with the business application and I can pick SharePoint Azure. And you'll see here I have a target for my Office 365 business application. Now this is interesting, right? Because I have two different relationships that are possible. This might be the parent, Azure, in which case it would go here. But in our case, we have a downstream relationship. So that's going to go on this side. All right? so now I can create that relationship. And I now have those. And then when I say commit changes, we can make sure that we can read it and, and make sure that we have what we need. So website management, just to double check, website management is going to be our capability. And that's uh, provided by Office 365, right? Which is our provided by. And then also I have Office 365 provides SharePoint Azure. 
So that's my relationship. Okay, now I commit those and I, and I redrew those relationships. Really easy, instead of going through how we traditionally do it uh, with this plus box. It takes a lot of time to do that. Now if I go ahead and refresh here and I look at my dependency map, you'll see that I reestablish those relationships. Okay, so that's going to give us our traditional dependency view. And then in our dependency view, um, you know, we'll, we'll have those. So it's provided by provides, and you can see here what it looks like downstream. So it's really nice when you get this set up to make sure these relationships work the same way. Now, if I, if I went and I, I picked a different object, so let's jump all the way over here, and I'm going to pick website hosting. Uh, actually, I'm going to pick this one because it has two relationships, upstream and downstream. So let's go pick a service offering. And um, actually, I'm going I'm to do business services because I don't have service offerings in here. So if I go to business service, and I do the same thing on the business service, so I'm going to pick on website hosting here. And then website hosting does not have any upstream relationships or downstream relationships. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit my relationship. And what I want to do is I want to look so I can see that that website hosting service has a relationship. And, and when, when you click on this, when you first installed in your instance, when I clicked on this, I had about 30 different relationships that I could connect to a business service. Now, if you're adhering to the common service data model, the only thing you're supposed to be able to connect to a business service is a service offering. I should never be connecting a business service to an application service or even a piece of hardware. So I made it restrictive in my instance, so only service offering comes up here. And then what I can do is I could pick up all the service offerings and then be able to connect those once I have them. Right, so that's how InSpy works. Now I want to talk a little bit about the configuration. And the configuration part is how does it know when I go into these different types of objects, right? So if I go into an application service, how does it know that I want to connect only certain things? And so if I pick up SharePoint Azure, um, how does it know that I can only connect to an application service that I'm only able to connect certain things. So these tables up here that get picked. You might get frustrated in the beginning because you might not see any in yours. Now the way that FreeLucy does this is that it uses a configuration table in ServiceNow. The, the configuration table is called suggested relationships. So if you type in suggested in your navigator, you should find a table under your configuration items called suggested relationships. And what you're going to want to do is edit this table. Now what I did for the demo that I did so far, I created relationships to 14 different items. So anything that you see up here that's updated after 1130, I created all these relationships, but I also had to delete a bunch, right? Because I don't want to ever let anybody connect a, a to my, business service, I don't want to let anybody connect web servers. And that was possible because this table isn't maintained that well. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share out these relationships. And the way that I'll do that is I'll be able to go ahead and create a filter on here. Uh, so what I can do is I can say, um, pick on my last updated date. And what I'll do with that filter is I'll say, give me anything that's updated. Uh, after a certain time, and I'm going to export this to a set. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share that set out to everybody. And this is a, my first shot at it. So there's definitely going to be updates. I'm only doing the service relationships right now. So anything updated after, um, let me see, November 25th is when I did my first changes. Right. So these are all the relationships that I'm going to go ahead and export. And uh, there's, there's 13 of them. I might add one more in here, but there's 13 of them that I have in there. And this will give you the start so that you can import this. And so what I'll do is I'll come up here and I'll export it to an, a set. And then what you're going to do is you're going to come back and you're going to import XML. And you'll be able to import the data set that I export so that your suggested relationships are the same as mine. 
When I export this file, I'm going to put it out on our Google Share, the open Google Share that we have for the Digital Service Workgroup. And what I'll do is I'm going to link it in the bottom of this YouTube video. So if you go down in the notes, you should see a link to that file so that you can pull that XML file down and have it yourself. And we'll use that same directory that I'm going to share out in that link to go ahead and create updates. So if anybody wants to put any updates in that same directory, please feel free to add or, or correct what I have there if there's any relationships that I messed up in this first go. All right, thanks for your time and happy modeling. Bye, everybody.